And the reason why I think it's so powerful on this last week as we celebrate his life is because he's going to go into this last week with throngs celebrating him. And he's going to go out of this last week with nobody standing by him. Even his own apostles will run away from him. Listen to what Elder Holland said about this. Quote, a very great multitude thronged to meet him, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. And then at the end of the week, Elder Holland says, where were all those people now? Can one lose that many friends in seven days? And I think one of the reasons why is because people imagine Jesus or they want him to be one thing, but he turns out to not be what they want him to be. For example, on the first week, one of the very first things Jesus does is he cleanses the temple. And Jesus could have come into Jerusalem, gone over to the Antonia Fortress, and wiped out the Romans. And he doesn't do that. The very first thing he does is he cleanses the temple. And it shows that Jesus, he's not going to be the kind of Messiah that the people necessarily wanted him to be. He's going to be the kind of Messiah that his father told him to be. He's here to cleanse hearts, not to cleanse Romans out of the city. He's here to make God's house a holy house, not to make our houses perfectly comfortable. And I think this is really important for us as we reflect on who Jesus is around Easter, is again, we say, who is he to me? Who is this? And I was even commenting to somebody recently, when we say our prayers, in simplistic prayers, it's like, man, are we really praying for God's will or are we just praying to be in the Garden of Eden? You know, everything is... Bless me to be safe. Bless no bad things to ever happen. Bless nobody to ever get sick. Bless nobody to ever get hurt. Bless me to do get A's on all my exams. Bless me to succeed at my job. Bless everything to be fine all the time. Like even my own kid, when they say their prayers, I think the phrase, bless that we can all be happy and all be safe is said about a hundred times per prayer. And it makes me wonder where I'm like, the point of life isn't to be back in Eden. The point of life is to learn to be celestial. I'm probably soapboxing a little bit too much here right now up front, but I think people might lose their faith when Jesus doesn't turn out to be who they want him to be, which is a deliverer from metaphorical Rome or making life, the external life perfect. And what he wants to do is make our internal life holy through his holiness. I think as we progress in our own spirituality and really coming into Christ and really hearing his voice, our prayers go from make everything in my life perfect to help me internally to become more holy, help me to become more like thee, help to change my heart, help to mold my character, help not deliver me from the difficulties of life, but deliver me from sin. We shift from This is everything I want to, what is it that you want for me? And I think those who stay with Christ, the disciples who do testify of him and are there with him and rejoice in him and love him, they've made that shift from the external, deliver me from the Romans and the the automatic meal maker, bread deliverer, heal my broken bones. They've had an experience with the Lord where he's healed their hearts and changed their lives and made them more godlike people that they can therefore testify of his divine grace and of his uh, divine sonship, uh, not just as an external miracle worker.